Hey y'all, today I just wanted to share hopefully a message of encouragement. So today I just kind of wanted to address why God allows suffering to happen and how he uses those hard times to bring about good things. I will say the hard truth that is you're probably never going to find the concrete answer that you might be looking for, but I'm also going to put out there that at least from my experience, the waiting is so worth it. So while I can't fully explain to you why God is allowing for the coronavirus to happen and I can't exactly tell you what his plans are, I do want to hold up some instances where God has used times of trial to redeem them for good. In my own personal life at least, and some of you might know this, some of you might not, but about two years ago today, I came home one weekend from college to visit my parents and I actually got in a really bad accident and broke my back. I ended up having to wear a back brace, I was home for five weeks, I ended up pretty much having to finish my semester online. I was quickly pulled away from all the friends I was starting to make and on top of all that, I was just really lost and didn't really know what to do next, really didn't know what God's plan for me was at that point. Fast forward to now, I'm actually back at my parents' house. I'm finishing my semester online. I'm not around any of my friends and to be honest, I almost feel like where I was two years ago, except now everyone's in the same boat with me, and more importantly, now my identity is in Christ. So going back to two years ago, freshman me didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what God's plan for me was. But looking back on that time now, if I hadn't gone through all of that, I might not have gone on summer leadership project with the ministry I was a part of. I might not have made the friends that I have now, and I might not have come to Christ that same summer. So while that definitely was a pretty devastating time in my life, the Lord definitely redeemed that time for good. And praise God that he did, because even now, of course, I think quarantine is hard, and I'd rather be out with my friends and in community um, and just being able to see people again. But I also have hope that better things are ahead of us. I definitely meant for this to be a rather shorter video, but I wanted to read you all the verse that I held on to two years ago when I was going through everything. And it's from Isaiah 66, 9. It says, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born, says the Lord. And I'm actually going through a devotional with my D group right now, and it's about this time in the wilderness. And one of my biggest takeaways um, from this devotional so far is that the wilderness is not our destination. So God's not going to bring us into these hard times and just stop. Like, he's going to keep moving us forward. It just has to be part of the journey to get to his destination where he wants us to be. And even to give you another example, I think it's really cool to see how even when Jesus performed miracles in the Bible, you can clearly see that there wasn't an ideal situation and Jesus came and he made something good out of it to point the people to him. So I recently listened to a sermon from Passion and it's about the feeding of the 4,000. This story is in Matthew chapter 15 verses 29 through 39. Here we have Jesus along the Sea of Galilee and there are great crowds around him. Jesus calls his disciples in verse 32 and says, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry or they may collapse on the way. So here already we see obviously not an ideal situation. Jesus is surrounded by great crowds and the people are hungry, but he doesn't want to send them away from him because spoiler alert, Jesus provides. The disciples have with them seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. And then we see Jesus providing for these people and it says the number of those who ate was 4,000 men besides women and children. Lastly, even just to tie everything in with Easter this past weekend, Jesus really did come to seek and to save the lost. Now Jesus had to suffer on the cross. He suffered in our place for our sins. And on the third day he rose overcoming death. Why does God allow suffering? One of my favorite defenses from Tim Keller in his book Reason for God states that God doesn't allow suffering because he doesn't care for us. On the contrary, God sent his only son Jesus to come down and suffer on the cross. 
He took our place, our sins, and he allowed us to have a relationship with God the Father again. You guys, the gospel really is the prime example of God allowing suffering so he could redeem something good from it. I urge you to trust in God's plan during the midst of this coronavirus, whatever his plan might be, and to place your faith in Jesus because while this disease might promise us death, we are promised new life in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.